What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Astral Sorcery and today we are going to be setting up the Starlight Crafting Altar which is going to be the first upgrade of many that we make to our current Starlight Crafting setup. Now in episode one we made the Luminous Crafting Table at one of these large shrines and this has been the current Starlight Crafting setup up until this point. It's allowed us to get some very basic items, things like the Light Well, which makes liquid starlight, which we're actually going to need in today's crafting. And then we also were able to make the Fosic Resonator, which is going to come in handy when we're setting stuff up today, but it's not actually totally essential. But if we want to actually continue progressing in Astral Sorcery, we're going to have to upgrade this setup. And so it's going to allow us to actually unlock the third chapter in the Astral Tome. We currently have the first two, Discovery and Exploration. But by making the Starlight Crafting Altar, which is listed right here, it's going to unlock the third chapter. And along with that, a ton of new crafts, which actually require the Starlight Crafting Altar to do. Now, the reason they require it is because you actually get a new crafting grid that comes along with the Crafting Altar upgrade. It adds in four new spaces to put items in. So you're actually able to do all the prior crafts that you could do with the Luminous Crafting Table, but also you have access to all these new ones, which is awesome. There's a ton of cool stuff and then on top of that you're actually able to better harness starlight so a lot of crafts that you were able to do before will be even easier to do and will be able to do even more future crafts which is really important because the luminous crafting table itself wouldn't even be able to harness that much starlight so to actually set this up, we need to do two things. If we click on the Starlight Crafting Altar entry in the Astral Tome, we can see that it's actually a pretty simple craft to make the Starlight Crafting Altar. You're gonna have six different pieces of marble, a rock crystal or a celestial crystal, but you're probably gonna wanna go with the basic rock crystal and then the liquid starlight. So you do need to make sure you have a functioning light well to get at least a one bucket of liquid starlight to be able to craft this. And then if we look up here, it's going to require above average starlight for the luminous crafting table. Now, the reason this is interesting is because this isn't going to be like the crafts we've done so far, because this is going to consume the luminous crafting table too. So when you do this, you're going to put the items in, you're going to end up getting the bucket back, but the luminous crafting table will transform to the starlight crafting altar. Now, that's not the only thing we have to do. This actually won't function on its own we actually need to also make a multi-block structure that's going to be set up around the new altar that we just crafted to allow it to function. And this is going to have all the different blocks needed right up here. I believe the total is going to be 68 different blocks of marble. And we're gonna go over the very easy way to get a hold of all these. Then we're gonna need some sooty marble and then the starlight crafting altar in here. We're able to see the full setup. And if we click here, we can switch per Y level view and go up so you can actually see it. And it's really important that we pay very close attention to the different marble blocks that are used in this, because if you mess up even one block, your thing is not going to function. You will get the bottom starlight bar turning red. You won't be able to do anything. And a lot of people tend to mess this up because of how similar these can look. So we'll be going over all that very in depth to make sure you guys don't mess it up. But all around, today's episode should be relatively quick. And the next episode, we'll be able to use this for some pretty awesome stuff. So the first thing we need to do since it is nighttime now is whip out the Fosic Resonator and verify that we are in fact in an area that is going to have a ton of starlight because as we saw, the Luminous Crafting Table is going to need above average starlight to do this craft. So we're actually fine leaving it right here. And if we come over here, we have pretty much everything we need. So for this craft, we're going to grab out a rock crystal, six marble, and a liquid starlight bucket. But oh no, we only have basic marble. Now, if we actually come over into JEI, we can see that you have crafting recipes for all these different types of marble right here. But they're a little bit of a pain to make, and you're going to get more than you actually need. So an easy workaround for this is to grab out some stone and a piece of iron. And we are going to make the stone cutter. Now with this, we can throw it down right here. And if we put the marble in, we're able to pick the exact cuts of marble that we want. So if we look at our craft, if we go in the astral tome and look at it, we can see we need four marble pillars and two chiseled marble. So all we got to do is come over here and we are going to grab out four marble pillars. And where is it? Two chiseled marble. 
So there we go. We get kind of a funky noise. And now we have all the marble that we need. So we can place this in here. We get the chiseled marble, the rock crystal. Again, this is a craft where the rock crystal properties do not matter. So you're probably gonna wanna use one, which really isn't that great. Now, obviously, we haven't really gone over how to weigh these in terms of how great they are, but I'm picking one that has a very low purity and we can't even see the other stuff on it because we haven't progressed far enough. But if there's ones that you have that have really good base stats that you're looking forward to using for crafting weapons or tools or stuff like that, you definitely don't wanna use it here and you don't need to worry about the properties. Properties. So use a random one, use the worst one you have, either way, it doesn't matter. And then we put the bucket of liquid starlight in and we can see our craft is ready to go. We have more than enough starlight to do it. So we're gonna get our resonating wand, right click it, and you can see that we actually get additional particles going on here because it transforms the table as a whole. So now you can see if we look in the chat that we have not only done the starlight crafting altar, but we have unlocked the attunement page or chapter, I should say, in our astral tome. Now, this is where all these new crafts are gonna be, all this cool stuff we can go over. And if we look in the starlight crafting altar, we can see those four additional grid spaces for putting more stuff in for crafting. And if we look in the astral tome, at a lot of these stuff. Well, I, of course, I picked the one that doesn't actually have it, but you can see here that these are going to actually put those spaces to good use. So we'll be able to use that in the very near future. But the main issue right now is that you can see that this starlight indicator at the bottom here is fully red, which means that you do not have the proper multi-block setup to actually use this and harness some starlight. So what we're gonna do is actually grab this out, move it, right over here. And the reason that I have the Fosic Resonator is simply because we obviously want to put this in an area with a very high environmental starlight capacity. So we will be able to add a ton of stuff to this to increase the amount of starlight that it's able to harness. But right out the gate, we can make it super easy on ourselves by finding a nice area to build this multi-block in. So we're gonna do it right here. And I'm going to put it pretty much right down in the center of this area. And now we can come back over here and get all the blocks we need. So we're going to grab out a ton of marble and then we're gonna to have to make some sooty marble. So I believe it needs 21. So we are going to make this, we get out 24, we'll have a little bit extra. And then we can make the remaining stuff. If we go back out from here and go down to the exploration, like I showed you guys, we can get a full list of everything we need. So eight chiseled marble, eight marble pillars, 24 marble bricks, and 28 marble arches. So we can come over here and we can pull out, it was eight marble pillars. I believe it was eight chiseled marble. Let's see if I can remember this. I think it was eight chiseled marble. And then I wanna say it was 28 marble arches. If we grab all these out. That sound is becoming less funny and a little bit more annoying the more we do it. Um, and then I should, now I can shift click this out. That'll save us some of the annoying sound. And then I believe 24 marble bricks. Now this is the first time we're actually crafting these. You could just grab them, mine them from the, uh, the areas that you've probably been to with the different shrines in them. Some of them obviously will have more than others, but it's nice to know how to craft them because eventually you're gonna run out. You're gonna need to have some actually crafted. And so now we can place down, starting from the center out, the different setup for this. So we are going to clear out an area right down here, and we are going to put down the sooty marble. So I believe if we open this up, it is going to be this, and then little squares out of each corner. So we do the three by three, and then we take out three at each of these corners, right like this, and that is going to be I believe all the city marble we have to place down, we should have three extra left over. So there we go. Now the city marble is done and actually the hard part begins. So we are going to start out by placing down the marble bricks and these are going to go pretty much right around the sooty marble here. And we're going to clear out just this entire line around and then the one block that dips into it. But there is one thing here that we have to keep a close eye on, and that is the one block that we actually can't see until we go to the specific Y level. And this is where I guarantee you, I'm gonna say it right now, I'm going to have to reply to comments with this. This is where people are going to screw this up. And it's why it's so important to keep an eye on the count of the blocks. Right here, 
we do not put anything in the corner blocks right now. We're going to fill up everything but the corner blocks with the marble brick. So just like that, we use it all up. Now that should be the dead giveaway if you make the exact amount that you do not put marble bricks in the corners. But if you're not paying attention, that's something you can easily screw up because if we look, most people will look at this and assume that the blocks under those pillars are also marble bricks, but they are not. They are chiseled marble. So we put the chiseled marble in each one of the corners like this. It's very easy to screw up because you pretty much can't see them. But then we're going to grab out the marble pillars, which will go on top of that. And we're going to put down two. When you put down one, you don't get the actual pillar kind of graphic formation. So we're going to put down two. And there we go. And so you can see now, once these form, it completely covers up the block below it. I cannot stress it enough. This is where you will mess up if you're going to mess up. I'm not saying everyone will, but even when I was initially looking through it, I completely missed that. So if you don't have the exact block count, I can almost guarantee you're gonna screw that up if you don't pay attention. But here we go. We actually now have the exact setup other than the marble arches on the sides. So all we gotta do is dig these out. And again, nothing in the corners, but nothing will actually go in the corners at all this time. And this is where we will place the last 28 blocks. This is why you need the most of them for the marble arches. So now we can grab out all 28 of those fill this up and we will be good and I'll probably wait until nighttime so I can actually show you guys what will happen is we can look at the red right now once we finish this setup the red will go away but uh, we won't actually be able to see the starlight levels in there so here we go and now it is gone so the minute you finish it it will register that you have the appropriate multi-block set up I think it looks super cool as we go up to the next tier eventually, this is going to get even larger. So I'm actually going to try and plan the base we'll be setting up around this. Obviously it needs to have access to the sky and stuff, so I'm not planning on making like a home or anything, but I'm gonna make the area nice around here. But just let it be known if you're planning on putting this somewhere in your base that when you upgrade this to the next tier, this multi is gonna get even bigger. So uh, that kind of keeps happening. And as we add things to this to increase its ability to harness starlight, there's going to be a ton of things that go around it and all that. So you wanna give this a decent amount of room to be able to work with. Might even be worth it to just put it outside a little bit of ways away from your base. Um, or, you know, try and find an area using the Fosic Resonator that actually has a nice amount of starlight that is outside too. But for now, I think we're just going to chill and then we will hop back when it is nighttime because it looks like we're going to be waiting just a little bit for it to actually get there. And then I can talk a little bit about the different starlight mechanics with this. Okay, guys, so we are back. It is now nighttime, and I can now show you the actual starlight levels in this. Now, as you can see, it has a significantly larger bar, but if you remember back to when we looked at the regular Luminous crafting table earlier in the episode, right when we went to upgrade it, you might notice that the actual percentage of the bar filled is essentially the same. Now, this is pretty interesting because I haven't actually read up on this, but while I was doing testing and had one of these starlight crafting altars down directly next to a luminous crafting table with no other factors other than the environmental starlight impacting them, they seem to have the exact same percentage. But when you actually put things into craft, things like the light well that you can put in both, and there are very few things that can actually go in both to give examples of it, but things like the light well, which you could do in both, uh, it actually showed that you were able to craft it sooner in this specific altar. And the reason being, it actually required significantly less starlight levels percentage-wise to craft it. So in here, this is actually supposed to, if you read the Astral Tome, it is supposed to say that it has the ability to harness more starlight than the other one, yet it seems to go up by the same percentage, but when you craft something, it doesn't actually seem to be percentage based it seems like it requires less starlight when you're actually crafting so it's a very weird mechanic but either way this should actually increase your ability to craft things yet it should retain the same percentage starlight filled in here 
as you have with your luminous crafting table. So as you can see here, we actually pretty much have this thing essentially as full as it's gonna get at its current state when it is roughly midnight out, which is awesome because it means we actually don't need to do a ton of things with this placed right here in a relatively high starlight area uh, to get it all the way up to full. So again, I don't know if that's actually a bug, if it's supposed to be like that or not, but that is how it works, which I think is pretty interesting. But that is it with the Starlight Crafting Altar, guys. Everything's set up, everything's good to go, and we can start messing around with some stuff in the Attunement tab in the next episode. So hopefully you guys found today's episode informative. Please be sure to check the blocks under the marble pillars. Please, I know people are going to mess it up, and I don't want you guys to run into this issue and think something's messed up or bugged with the mod. So please remember to check that. But other than that, it should be pretty easy. Relatively quick episode today, but the next one, we'll have a ton of fun stuff to cover. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later.